and then it will appear on Michael's classes, michaels.com slash classes webpage the next day. Make sure you consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on our class recordings. If you're making along with us today, don't forget to tag Michaels with our hashtags, hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Michaels classes when sharing pictures of your work on social media. During class, you can interact with the instructor and moderators using the Zoom chat function. If you don't wanna see chat during class, you can turn it off in the Zoom settings. If you're on a tablet or mobile device, you can do that by clicking the three dots with the word more under them, then click the chat option, then click the bell-shaped button in the corner of your screen. If you're on a computer, you can stop the chat from popping up on your screen by clicking up the chat icon on the bottom of your screen to make sure that chat window appears on the right, and then clicking the down arrow at the top of the section and choosing pop out. You can then minimize or drop or drag that window out of view. Also, for the best view, make sure that you're watching in speaker view. We've spotlighted the instructor, so you will always be watching the instructor's point of view. If you wanna see everyone in the class, you can switch over to the gallery view as desired. We do have automatic closed captioning enabled for this meeting, so you can also turn those on in the settings under the three dots more button. Then click on meeting settings in where the gear icon is, and then toggle on the closed captions option. If you have any technical issues during class, you're welcome to message me directly in chat and I'll assist you there. Thank you, and now I'll turn the time over to our instructor for the class. Hi, everyone. And welcome to today's Zoom class. My name is Birgit Koopsen and I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and I'm going to um, do this demo today um, using my Jelly Arts gel plate and um, pen pestles. And first of all, I want to thank Michaels to give us uh, the opportunity to uh, teach this class today. Um, let me see. I think we can just switch to my uh, workspace, the camera, and then I can show you what uh, we are going to do today. And I'm also going to uh, make the chat visible for me so I can, when I have time, just see if there are any questions. And if I miss any questions, then uh, Madison and Luann are here and um, they can interrupt and ask me questions if they think it's necessary that I answer them. So first of all, I'm using the Jelly Arch gel printing plate, the five by seven plate today. Um, there is also an eight by 10 inch plate available at Michael's, but for demos, I find it uh, easier to work on the smaller plate because it's just a, a little bit faster for me. As you can see, I have my plate stored in my uh, original um, box, but between two sheets of copier paper. This is to make sure that I don't get air bubbles. If you would uh, um, store your plate between plastic sheets or in the, um, in the packaging as it is, you might get air bubbles and the pressure of the air bubbles could um, create impressions in the surface of the gel plate and you would see them in your print. So it's better to store your plate uh, between copier paper. So I'm going to place my um, gel plate on a sheet of paper and I've um, adhered the sheet of paper with some masking tape to my table to uh, make sure that it doesn't move too much when I'm working with it. So today is going to be um, mostly about pen pastel. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about pen pastel before I start with the actual demo. So pen pastel basically is um, a compressed uh, pastel, uh, pastel powder that's compressed in a pan. That's why it's called uh, pan pastel. So it's in a pan and it's um, very high pigmented and it's like a pastel bar, but then in a pan, which means that you can use it with um, a variety of tools like you would use, for instance, uh, brushes with paints. So at Michaels, you can buy these 
little pens uh, like individual colors like these, like I'm showing here. And uh, if I'm right, there are 85 different colors available. But you can also buy trays that can hold um, 10 or 20 of these pens. You can just um, pop them in there. So you can have your favorite colors in a tray like this, and then you have like one lid on top. And you, when you take it off, then you have access to all your favorite colors in one go, which is quite easy. The little pens all have an individual lid. What you can do with the uh, individual pens is that you can um, build up a stack of pens. So you take off the lid, uh, you leave only the lid on the uh, top one and then you can just connect them together like this. So if you want to take them with you, for instance, when you are traveling, you can just do it like this and have all your uh, colors together. And that's very easy to bring. But I have two of these, um, two of these trays with the colors that I uh, use most when I use my pen pastels. So I have them all on hand. Um, pen pastels are really fun to use on, uh, on the gel plate because they are so highly pigmented and so they really easy pick up from the plate and give really nice colors. To apply the pen pastels to the plate, you have several options. So at Michael's, you can get all kinds of um, soft tools. Um, for instance, sponges like these. They are very squeezy like um, makeup sponges. And you can get um, what they call soft applicators, which are also like little makeup um, tools and you can get them like these little ones and at some point they uh, you can't use them anymore but you also have these and I will just quickly open this one to show you so this comes with loose little applicators that you can actually pop in there so if this doesn't work anymore, you can just take it out and pop a new one in there. And you can also you, uh, buy these separately. And then you have what they call knives in different um, shapes. And you get these like covers. The covers you slide over the knife and then uh, you can use it until it's uh, no good anymore. And then you can just take it off and uh, put a new one on or first, first you can just um, flip it around and then use, use the other side. So if you would like to do like kind of painting on your plate or add details to what you're doing, then these can be really handy. But uh, mostly I use the bigger sponges on my gel plate for uh, coloring in. Uh, larger parts. So what I'm going to do is basically um, mixed media printing because you cannot um, pull uh, pen pestles straight from the plate because it's a dry product and you always need a, a wet layer to pull from the plate. So I'm going to show you three and if I have enough time maybe four different ways of using pen pestle on the plate and I'm going to start with um, creating a lace effect and I'm actually going to use uh, pieces of lace and I'm going to apply a layer of uh, paint uh, to my plate so I'm adding some paint. I think I'm only going to use these dark, this darker color. So this is uh, one of my favorite blue um, colors. It's called Prussian Blue U. 
that's the one that I'm using now. It's from uh, Winsor and Newton, by the way. All the paints that I'm using um, today are Wins either Winsor and Newton or Liquitex Basics. Oh, they are so. Can yeah. I quickly uh, uh, interrupt? They keep asking uh, several questions about: Are there any alternatives to pan pastels if they don't have them and they were printing along? And could they use regular pastels? Yeah, well, the thing is, if you use the regular pastels that are in a bar, they don't really work unless you find a way to um, get the pastel off from the bar with a sponge, for instance, but you cannot uh, apply it straight from the bar to the uh, plate. But uh, of course, there are other brand uh, pastels like, uh, for instance, Jane Davenport has some uh, pretty pastels that uh, work well on the plate too. And you could even use eyeshadow. The thing is though, that pen pastel is the most pigmented and uh, gives the best result when using them on the plate. But you can definitely get really nice results too with, um, with the Jane Davenport pastels, for instance. And uh, what, what is really nice with the eyeshadow is that um, a lot of times it has a little bit of uh, glimmer in it and you get a really nice shine on your, um, on your paper. So it's worth a try, definitely. So I'm going to roll out my paint and then I'm going to use my uh, pieces of lace as a kind of like a texture plate. So I'm going to place these on my plate. And um, I'm going to place a sheet of paper on top and then rub it a little bit. So the lace is actually going to um, pick up paint from the plate and the open areas of the lace, um, the paint will stay behind on the plate. So it's really important that you use only a thin layer of paint when you do this, because otherwise um, two things are important. One is that your lace will start to move um, when there's too much paint on your plate. It's kind of like then sliding over the plate, if that makes sense. And uh, secondly, um, it will not, the lace will not be able to pick up all the paint because um, it's too much. And then there will be um, too many areas on the plate that the paint will not uh, be lifted up. But uh, I hope you can see, and I'm just going to have a quick look into my camera. Yeah, you can actually see that there are now open areas where you can see the white paper that's underneath the, uh, the gel plate. And that's the areas where the lace actually picked up the paint from the plate. So the open areas, the paint stayed behind and the uh, um, solid areas picked up the paint from the plate, creating the texture. Now, um, the paint needs to be dry before I add the pen pestle, because if I would take my sponge now and add the pen pestle right away, then um, I would just mix the pen pestle with the paint and I will, I actually want to keep uh, the pattern that I created, right? So I have to be a little bit patient and wait a little bit for the paint to dry. That's another reason why you should not use too much paint because then um, you spend a lot of time waiting. And I don't know about you, but I'm personally not a big fan of waiting uh, for paint to dry. So, Thin layers of paint always work best. And um, I should also turn my brayer around because if I leave it on the paper like this with a little bit of wet paint still on it, it might uh, stick to the paper because when acrylic paint dries, it actually uh, works like a glue and it will um, stick to the paper and then you get paper on your brayer. So you should actually between layers, a brayer of the paint from your, on uh, a cleanup paper and then turn your brayer around so it cannot stick to the, uh, to the paper. So 
let me see. I think this feels pretty dry. Now I can add pentestal. And I'm going to use one of these like bigger sponges. And uh, now I can just add random color. So I'm just going over here with the sponge and I really need only a tiny little bit. If you go into your uh, little pan with your sponge and you see loose powder, then you're actually um, rubbing too hard in your little pan because you really don't need to see any loose powder. Um, you, it's just like dabbing and there will be enough pigments on the sponge to create a nice color on your plate. Now I can simply go with my little sponge on paper and wipe off most of the leftover pigments and I can go take the same sponge and just go into another color and add a different color to my background. You can actually wash these sponges. You can do them in, um, uh, put them in the uh, washing machine. I don't know if you have these like little nets where you put your, um, what are they called in English? This is funny because we call them panties, but panties. Lingerie, is... it's lingerie. Uh, yeah, your lingerie, something like that. You have these little like little nets, so you can just put these in there together and then put them in your uh, washing machine. And um, they will not like uh, look really clean again because the pigments will uh, color the sponge, but there will no pigments be coming off the sponge anymore. So you have a clean sponge, actually. So I'm just going to add a variety of colors. And maybe you can see that uh, the color that I'm putting on here is um, not changing the blue of the paint. It's only going into the open areas. That's because um, pen pastel, um, doesn't stick to um, a non-porous surface. So it sticks to paper, it sticks to the jelly plate because it is sticky, but it doesn't stick to the acrylic paint because when the acrylic paint dries, it turns kind of turns into a thin layer of plastic. So it's actually not a sticking to the paint. Not that it would matter because when you put your paper on there and you flip it around, the blue would be on top of the color anyway. But um, it's just something that I noticed when I um, started doing this. Uh, one more color. Let's do a darker yellow. Maybe a little bit of pink down here. Okay, and now I don't have to wait anymore because pen pastel is a dry product, so you can put paint on there straight away. Um, if you're just starting and you're not really sure if you use too much uh, pastel, because if, if you use too much of the pastel and you get this like uh, powder, loose powder, you want to uh, remove the loose powder from your plate before you add the paint because otherwise the uh, the pigments in the powder will mix with, with your paint and just spread everywhere so you will get uh, all the colors mixed so you might want to um, put some a paper towel on top before you do the print and remove any loose powder in case it's there so you can see there's no loose powder on my uh, paper towel but if there would have been any loose powder, I would have picked it up now. Now I'm going to use um, a transparent mixing white acrylic paint to pick up uh, this print. And um, what I like about the, the mixing white is that it's uh, almost transparent. It's a very transparent white, so it will not change anything um, about the color. In this case, even if I would have used an, a normal white, it would not have changed anything. But if you, for instance, would print something that has open areas and uh, you want to keep the
the color of your paper visible. Uh, when you pull a print, you might want to take the mixing white because it will be almost transparent. And today I'm going to print on just regular um, copier paper, just a really uh, thin, cheap copier paper because these kinds of prints are really nice to use as collage material. But you could also print them on card and then uh, create cards of, or tags or whatever you want with them. So I'm rolling out a really thin layer of paint and it should be like really thin. So you can really see what's underneath the paint on the plate. Because if you have a thick layer of paint, your paper, your printing paper will only pick up the top layer of paint and not pull the color and the dry paint that's underneath. So you should always try to have your um, pick up layer of paint as thin as possible, but uh, yet still wet. And there we go. I hope it's sharp. Yeah. So now you see the whole pattern of the of the lace with the color behind. And now you might think, well, I could have done that with paint too. And yes, of course, you could have done it with paint. You could have used uh, pastel color paint and brayed it, brayed it out on top of the dried blue paint and then pull the print right away. And you would have uh, gotten a similar effect. Um, but this is really to show you the possibilities. And um, you can do things with pen pastel that you cannot do with paint, for instance, uh, because you are uh, working in smaller areas or um, in uh, specific places that you don't want to have to paint everywhere, but you want like specific places in that one color, then it's really handy to have the pen pastel. Um, now I used only light colors, but maybe you can see that um, there is some pigment left on the plate and you will not get, get that off uh, with just water or a baby wipe because of the pigments in the, in the pen pastels. So if you want to get this really off, I mean, now I clean it with, when I clean it with a baby wipe, it will not come off in my next print, um, but you still see it on the plate. So if you want to clean your plate completely, you just take a couple of drops of baby oil and um, a paper towel I have on here. And then you can just simply clean off all of the color from your plate. So it's not like really staining your plate. If you don't clean it with the baby oil, it looks stained but it is possible to get it off. As you can see, this is what just came off my, my plate. So that's the pigments that were left. And now I'm just going to go over there with the baby wipe to get off the, the grease of the baby oil. So my baby wipes are obviously uh, not oil-based, but uh, lotion. But you could also just uh, use a damp cloth. You don't have to use baby wipes. Um, yeah, did you want to ask something? I do, I do. Somebody has a question about, would you ever use Mod Podge instead of white paint to pick up the image? Well, I have never tried Mod Podge. I've, I've just nev really never used it in my life. I don't know why, but I've, I've never had it. Uh, maybe it's uh, not um, 
a product that's very common in the Netherlands. I'm, I'm not sure even, but um, I use a Liquitex matte medium and I'm actually going to show uh, a sample where I pick up the uh, pen pestle with the matte medium instead of the paint. So um, you don't change anything of the color that's on the plate. So I'm going to do, um, no, I can't, well, I can do actually do it right now. I'm going to uh, print on black paper. And because I'm going to print on black paper, I don't want to use paint to pick up the pen pestle because that would change the color of my paper. And that's why I'm going to use a matte medium because it is um, transparent and you will not see it. So let's do that next. Um, and um, this works really well with uh, stencils, but because I don't have any Michael stencils here, I'm going to do this, show this technique with um, Punchinella or uh, sequin waste. So this is a product that is a kind of a leftover when uh, sequins are manufactured. And then this is the um, leftover product and you can find it online. You can just Google it, sequin waste or punchinella. So I'm going to place these on my gel plate and then I'm go again going to use my sponge. And if I wish, I could color each a little open area in a different color using my um, knives, my soft tools. But of course, I don't have that much time uh, tonight. So I'm actually going to use my sponge and um, just color bigger areas. So I'm just going to use a variety of lighter colors in this matter because um, I want them to show up on the black. And um, the lighter your colors are, the better they show on, on the black paper. So it's light pink and light yellow and light blue. And then I'm just going to lift these up. And I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but there are a little pastel color dots on my plate. And I'm going to have my black paper ready and use the matte medium. And I'm just going to add two or three drops because also with the matte medium, you need to have this like really um, thin layer to be able to pick up the pen pestle from the plate. So, and that's really hard to see. So it's kind of a guess, kind of knowing after a couple of tries, how much mm, matte medium you, uh, you really need to pull that print. So normally when you use with, uh, work with pen pestles, like um, paint with pen pestles. So you can see there's so much pigment in, um, in the pen pestles that they even uh, cover are opaque on black paper. So you can do some really cool stuff with that. Um, but normally, so normally you would have to uh, use a fixative when you work with pestles, especially if you would put them uh, in an art journal, for instance, then you don't want the color to uh, transfer from one page to the other because um, it's not um, fixed. But um, when you do this kind of this kind of printing, then the color is already kind of uh, fixated in the 
paint that you use to pick up, uh, to, to pull the print. So it's not really necessary, but if you want to, uh, of course you can use a fixative spray that is made for uh, pastels. But um, I don't really like the smell. You really have to do it outside and also they are very expensive. So in that matter, I would also just use my uh, matte medium. I would just uh, roll out a layer, a thin layer of matte medium. Uh, for instance, if I would want to fixate this print that I just did, I would just roll out a thin layer of matte medium. And then put my print back on there like this. And um, let the matte medium dry and my print is fixated. It's that easy. I also do that with uh, other, um, I do that for instance with water soluble products. If I want to fixate them because I want to work with other products on top and I've used for instance, water soluble crayons or uh, watercolor uh, pencils or whatever. I just fixate them this way using my gel plate and matte medium to create that layer. You could not, in maybe with the pen pestle you could, but if you would use, uh, for instance, uh, water soluble crayons you and you would use a brush to apply the matte medium, you would just uh, reactivate the, the water soluble crayons. And so that wouldn't work. But if you print a thin layer on top, it's not moving and you can just uh, fixate whatever water soluble product you want to. Um, another thing is um, metallics. So pen pestel also has, has metallics like uh, copper. I don't know if you can see uh, the shine on uh, camera, but uh, a gold and a silver, which gives a really, really nice shine on your print. So I'm going to print with these now. And I'm going to use again the Prussian blue but I'm going to mix that with um, a magenta because that is just a pretty combination. And I think they will work well with the gold and the sil silver. Let's put these on this side. So I'm just again adding paint to the plate and I'm kind of blending them and make sure that I get a nice thin even layer of paint because again I don't want to wait too long and also a thick layer of paint is um, much more difficult to pull from the plate than a thin layer of paint. And I'm going to get out my, one of my favorite printing tools, bubble wrap. And I'm really happy with this like really giant bubble wrap, but you can just as well do this with a smaller bubble wrap. And you just press it down. And then when you lift it up, the bubbles will uh, pick up the paint and create the pattern. Now, isn't that just gorgeous? I love it. So again, um, this needs to dry before I can add uh, the pen pestle because otherwise I would lose my uh, pattern and I would just completely mix my pen pestle with my background and that's not what I want. So while we're waiting for this to dry, what else can I tell you? I can show you something. So the technique that I showed you before with the, uh, with the lace is uh, basically the same technique as the um, 
the photo that was on the website on the sign up page. And that were these two, these two prints were on the sign up page. And what I basically did is I uh, rolled out black paint, put some leaves on top, then uh, put a piece of white paper on top like just like I did with the lace then remove the paper and the leaves and so the um, the image of the leaf stayed behind on the plate where the leaf did not pick up the paint does that make sense so I let the paint dry then used my uh, knives to color in the the leaves because you can do it very precisely if you use the knives and i also went around the leaves with pen pastel using the knife and then i pulled the print just with the um uh, the mixing white so you don't see any paint in the background so that's the exact same technique as the one with the lace, but just a, a little bit more detailed using different colors in one leaf. So that's one of the things that I meant when I said um, you can do things that you can't do with paint because coloring that coloring in that leaf would have been uh, way more difficult with paint than it is with the pen pestle. So let me see, it's still a little bit wet and one of my sheets fell on the floor. floor. I just picked that up. So let me see if we can speed up the drying a little bit. Yeah, it's getting down here, it's still a tiny little bit wet so this afternoon I made another one with the leaves and um, so I can just show you what I did here around the leaves I created a shadow and I um, did that with um, ink tense a durant ink tense pencil so it's a watercolor pencil so you can just draw a line and then use a brush to uh, to spread the color and create that shadow and the really nice thing about uh, intense pencils is that they, uh, when they are dry, they are permanent. So they are watercolor, but when they are dry, they are permanent. So they are really, really nice for uh, mixed media and they are also available at Michaels. Now, this should be dry enough. And now let's add some silver. Let's add some silver and some copper and some gold. And they are really, really shiny. And uh, so I'm not sure. I don't think you can see it as well on camera, which is a shame, but um, I'm sure you get the idea. Okay, um, my mixing white. So I could um, also use my uh, matte medium for this, of course, instead of my mixing white. But the thing is with the mixing white, you still can see a little bit uh, where your layer is and how thick your layer is, which is more difficult with the, with the matte medium. So the matte medium I only use uh, when I can't use a uh, paint because it's less clear how thick your layer is. Now I can still see that there's this white shine. So I know where I, that I still have enough paint on the, on the plate. I see somebody asking if there are are any other metallics besides gold, silver, and bronze? I'm not sure. These are the three that I have. I only know that there are 85 colors on the Michaels website. So maybe there are some more metallics uh, on there. So here we go. And 
I don't know if you can see it when I turn it to the light, but it's really, really very shiny. Very, very nice. Okay. Can you use perfect pearls? Why not? Um, I don't see any reason why you cannot use them. I'm not sure if they are um, pigmented enough to really show up on the on your prints, but uh, they will not harm your plate. So I would say, just try, just play and experiment. And um, that's what I also do. I just throw everything on my plate and just see what happens. And sometimes I'm lucky and I have something really cool and other times it just doesn't work out. But with everything I've thrown on my plate, I've never ever ruined any. Um, some look like they are ruined, even though they are not, because they are totally, they have totally different color. I will show you like this one. And this uh, looks uh, exactly like this one and it came out of the packaging. Um, but this is my the plate that I use with my alcohol inks and the alcohol inks actually do stain your plate. It does not at all affect any future prints. It does not damage your plate, but it will color your plate. So if that's a problem for you, then you should not use alcohol inks or any um, stamping inks that have uh, like dye inks, some of the dye inks like archival will also stain your plate. It is not a problem, but if you don't like it that it's colored, then you should not. You should not use them. Um, let me see one more. I did the, how much more time do I have? I can do another fun one, like using a Sharpie and pen pestle on the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my plate on top of a uh, magazine image. And this is really fun if you are, especially, I mean, it's fun for everyone, but it's especially fun if you are not a really good drawer. And um, this way you can actually draw on the plate. So I have Sharpies here, but you can also use alcohol markers, like for instance, the Winsor & Newton Pro markers. Um, I don't have a black one, so that's why I'm using my Sharpie. Uh, today, but you can use all kinds of permanent markers or uh, alcohol markers on your plate. And so you can put your plate on a photo and then you can uh, just trace it with the with your alcohol marker or your Sharpie or any other permanent marker. You could also use uh paint markers but most times paint markers have like uh thicker tips and you cannot do like really um detailed finer lines that's why what i like about uh these like sharpie for instance that they have like a really fine i think this is the called ultra fine point so you can do really fine detailed lines. And um, the ink needs to be dry when you pull the print, which means that you can um, take as much time as you need to uh, draw a perfect image. I don't have that much time right now, so I'm just going to real quick only put the uh, uh, important features in there just because I want to show you uh, what you can do. Also, I'm now not uh, above my plate. So probably when you look at it from above, my uh, eyes are not really in the area where the eyes of the 
image R. It's probably a little bit off, but ah, that's okay. It's about showing you the possibilities. Okay. Something like this. And what you can do now is um, use your tools, like your soft tools, and color the image. And uh, you might wonder why would you do it this way? Why would you not just uh, draw on the paper and then uh, color it in afterwards? Well, first of all, uh, maybe I can't draw that well, so I can't draw on the paper directly. And second, um, oh, I'm ruining this one. And second, um, when you go with the pen pastel over the black lines, they it will be um, partly cover up, cover up the lines. So if I would have a drawing and then color it in with a pen pastel, and I would go over the black lines. I would uh, lose the black lines. But in this case, the black lines are the first layer on the plate and the pen pencil is going to be the second layer. So at the moment that you pull the print and everything gets flipped around, your black lines will be on top of your pen pencil. So you don't even have to be really careful with your coloring. The only thing that you really have to think about is that the first layer of pen pastel you put on there will also be the top layer on your print. So if I would make, for instance, if I would have uh, used a, like, I can actually do it because then you can see it in your, it's not going to be a really nice print, but then at least you can see it. If I put a really dark color here to create, uh, her cheeks. Um, and I think that's too dark, then it has, there's no use in going over it with a, a lighter color because the lighter color is on top of the darker color. And when you do the print, it gets flipped and the darker color will still be on top. So that's not really going to help you. So you have to think a little bit about where to put, which color to put on first. On the other hand, uh, once you've put, pulled the print, you can of course always go back in there with the pen pencil and uh, correct areas that you don't like. Um, the print you pull doesn't have to be the final product. It can be something that you can still uh, work on once you've pulled the print. So you don't even have to color the entire uh, drawing. You can also decide to um, only color the face and um, pull the print and then use watercolors to um, color her hair or anything like that. So the possibilities are really endless. And I'm just going to finish this one real quick because we, I think we have like only 10 minutes left. And I will also, also want to see if there are any more questions that I need to, to answer. So Birgit, there's one here that says, what color did you use for the face? Oh, let me see if I can. So I used, the, the most that I used was red iron oxide tint, and it has a number and it's uh, 388. I don't know if you can see it. So this is the, uh, the one color that I used and I also used, I uh, mixed it a little bit with this one, I think, which is a uh, magenta tint. Okay, they also want to know, they're asking what is the name of the set that's on your left, the colors that we can see in the screen. So the pink. This? Yes. So is this is, 
I, I just I just got an empty tray and I just put my favorite colors in there. So it's not bought as a set. Okay. So you have uh, on the Michael's website there, you can buy the trays uh, either with 10 or with 20, um, mm -hmm. where you can put 10 or 20 pen pencils in. And okay. then you buy the, um, the colors separately and you can just put them in there. Okay. So this, this just fits in there. I can just take this one out and put this one in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then somebody asked about the color of Sharpie. So you used a black Sharpie. So they yeah. want to know, could you use any color Sharpie for your outline for a different look? Absolutely. You can use any color of Sharpie or um, uh, alcohol, mar alcohol marker or permanent marker. Um, and and you can you can just you all use them on the plate. Some of them uh, might stain your plate. Uh, most of them will come off with uh, the baby oil, like I showed before. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not. So if that's a problem for you, um, then you might not want to uh, try that. But uh, you can use all of them. Okay, let's see how this how this comes off. And there we go. So as you can see, all the lines, uh, all the Sharpie lines came off and the color came off and I wasn't really, um, I didn't really, uh, was very, wasn't very precise with uh, adding the color because I wanted to uh, do it so quickly. Um, but I have a couple of, uh, I think I have some that I can actually show. Uh, let me see if I know where my journal is. Um, okay, so while you're looking for that, somebody just asked, so you don't need a layer of paint to be able to pull the design. Yeah, I put I put the mixing white on there. Okay, they didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, I actually put the mixing white on there. Um, and now I can't find my specific journal where I have some. I don't think I have it here actually. Uh, oh, I have it here. So, let me see. So this is um, done with pen pastel, but that's then an image transfer. So that's also a fun technique. I couldn't show today this quickly, the image transfers, but if you do an image transfer, you can also color it with pen pastel before you uh, pull it. So let me find a better one. This one is actually also uh, drawn with a marker on the plate. So there was also a photo underneath and then I drew it with, the, uh, with a thicker, as you can see, a thicker alcohol marker. And um, let me see, I should have, this is also an image transfer that was colored with pen pastel before I pulled the print. And there should be another one. Hmm. I don't know where it is, but um, you get the idea, right? Okay, I can't find it right now, but uh, oh, here it is. So this is also colored with pen pastel before I pulled the print. So you can do some really fun things with pen pastel on the plate. Perfect. Um, so maybe, Perfect. yeah, I want to show a few more pages of your journal. They're loving looking at your journal. Oh, oh, really? Okay. So this is uh, a handmade junk journal. And it's so it's a, the cover of an old book and I just cut out the inside and then I uh, made signatures of different papers from a, like really sturdy watercolor paper to old scrapbook papers and um, notebook paper and all kinds of papers. And 
a lot of gel printed papers. So most of the colored papers are just gel, pr gel prints and they became the like the background uh, pages in my journal. And now I can just work in there and add uh, additional layers or glue in a little, little prints and then uh, that way finish my uh, finish my journal. So I have all kinds of little tabs and stuff in there. I put maps in there from an old, um, I don't know what's called in English, an atlas. I don't know if you call it an atlas. We call it atlas. So um, yeah, whenever I feel like uh, doing something in here or when I have a nice uh, print that I think that would fit in here, I just put it in here and um, all kinds of stuff, stamping. And this is like a sewing pattern, all kinds, book paper, stamping, collage, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that's my, my art journal. This is like the negatives of uh, die cuts so i did some die cutting for hearts and these are the negatives and i just glued them in there some drawing a lot of sewing as you can see i love to sew in my in my art journals i love the extra texture that it gives and um, coloring pages all kinds of stuff is in there this is actually a fab um, uh, interfacing like a fusible interfacing what i used for my latest jelly arts video that I printed directly on the fusible interfacing and then you can just iron it on fabric but also on paper so I ironed it into my into my journal okay so maybe we can turn the camera around and um, I can see if uh, I think it's about time almost that we have uh, to stop um, so maybe, oh, I'm, I'm here already. Let me put my glasses on so I can actually see if there, uh, can you teach a glass making a junk journal? I probably could. <laughs> that's, actually be, that's actually a good idea. Um, I might actually do that, do an online class in uh, making a junk, junk uh, journal. Um, Please show the portrait again. Which one do you mean? I'm, oh, it's going really fast now. I'm pretty sure I missed a couple of uh, questions, but there are a couple of things that I want to say. And one of them is that um, there is a next Zoom class coming up in June. On June 1st, Marcia Falk is uh, teaching a free Zoom class for Michaels and Jelly Arts, uh, all about using brayers, brushes, and your fingers on uh, to paint on the gel plate. And then on June 14, I will be back uh, teaching a class about using thread, uh, yarn, and rope on your gel plate, which is also a lot of fun. And um, there is on the Jelly Arts blog, an event calendar where you can see when all the uh, Zoom classes and all the Facebook lives for Jelly Arts are uh, scheduled. So that's, that's uh, where you can go. And finally, I want to say that this is recorded and will be available on the Michaels website within 48 hours. So if you came late or if you uh, missed uh, something, you can uh, come back later and watch everything. And um, I think that's it for now. Thank you so much for being here with me and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>